I've never made a desk setup tour video before, but I really like watching these. I watch a lot of them. It's just super interesting to see how people manage their different workspaces and what kind of stuff they use to get their jobs done. But I've gotten quite a few messages from people who were desperate to see my desk set up. So I thought that would be a really fun thing to share right now. I also have done basically no preparation here. So I walked in here this morning, turned on all the lights, and now I will share it with you. So it's pretty clean and organized overall, but there's definitely spots that are not perfect and that's okay. I wanted to share that with you on purpose. So that way you don't feel like you need to have this ultra minimal perfect desk set up with the little Ikea plant and that's the only way you can be effective. There's a lot of really cool ways you can be effective in your workspace. So this is mine. So let's start with the desk itself, which is not actually even a desk. This is a Husky brand workbench from Home Depot. This is the six foot version. They make a whole bunch of different ones and it's great because it's just wood and metal. So they're super, super strong. It's also rated to support something like 2000 pounds. So even if you're a little Husky, it'll support you. And I like this so much that I have my main desk here and I also have another one over here in an L shape. Heather also has one in her office and we have one in the garage as an actual workbench. But I stole an idea from Heather and I took out the crossbars that go across here and up here so it gives me more room to push the chair in, to have room for my feet, have room for the dogs if they're under here. And what's really great about that is now on all sides of the desk, you have room to clamp different mounts and supports and boom arms and all that cool stuff. My chair is incredibly fancy. It's from a very exclusive store called Ikea and it was $60. I actually bought this for my classroom, but then it looks so good on camera that I just kept it at home because the white shows up great on camera. I do get a lot of questions about this desk mat. This I just found on Amazon. I think the brand is GDBT. And the way I remember that brand name is because the BT reminds me of Bluetooth. And sometimes you have problems with Bluetooth and you think GD Bluetooth. So GDBT, I'll put links to all this stuff in the video description. Nothing too crazy here. I use the Apple Magic Keyboard, which I really like because it has the numeric keypad. And then the Apple Magic Mouse, which I really love for editing and stuff because it just has all the side scrolling and it's small and compact and super easy to use. My monitor is an LG curved ultra wide display. I forget exactly which model it is, but it's the least expensive curved ultra wide that LG makes and it's 34 inches. I found 34 inches to be really the perfect size because it's plenty big to get stuff done, but it's also not so big that it's like overwhelming and blocking my view of everything. And of course, probably no surprise that the M1 Mac Mini is running into that display. And then I've got my trusty Hagibus port over here. This has a one terabyte hard drive inside of it in addition to all these different ports. So it basically acts as a storage for the Mac Mini, which is only 256 and then this adds a terabyte. Talked about this clock a couple times. This is a Nixie tube clock. These are actual Nixie tubes. This is from a company called Mill Clock. They're in Ukraine. And I really love having this thing here. It's super fun to look at <laughs> all day. Got it, cause it's Steins Gate. And then I recently got the A10 Mini Extreme ISO, which is not so mini, cause it's got all these ISO many buttons over here. This thing's amazing. I'm still learning a bit about it. So that's going here. And I said that one of the benefits of this desk is that it's easy to mount things to. So let's talk about this whole mess over here. First, I've got the blue compass boom arm mounted to hold the video mic NTG. You might've seen my boom arm comparison video with the compass. It's kind of a frustrating boom arm to position where you need it. But for an overhead mic, it works great just because this boom arm naturally wants to raise up higher. So when I'm recording a video, I normally just bring it over and put it right out of frame in front of me. Then I've got a super clamp with a magic arm that's supporting this small LCD monitor over here. And this has the multi-view output from the ATEM Mini Extreme. This probably isn't a permanent position for this, but multi-view is really helpful and being able to have the monitor above my actual display just makes it easy to see all of the different inputs. This monitor itself is from a brand called Elvid and honestly, I wouldn't recommend it. I got it years ago and it's funky and it has a bunch of issues and it never works quite right, but it's the one I have. And next to that, on this little small rig clamp, I have the receiver for the Hollyland Mars Pro 400S. So this lets you transmit wireless video. I just clip that there so it can run into the ATEM Mini. 
And then this is the transmitter for that, so I can put this on a camera or any other video source that I wanna transmit wirelessly. I'm doing a whole video about this. It's really fun, I like it a lot. Now I used to have my desk pushed all the way against the wall in an L shape, but this was, again, Heather's idea to kind of pull it out. So now I have this little cart back here, which just has like some equipment, my power supplies, and then also most importantly, uh, my synthesizers, which I need to use more. But by not lining the desks up perfectly, it gives me a lot more workspace over here, and it also gives me more space of the desk on camera. And then I've got another PSA-1 with a pod mic mounted on this corner of the desk. This is basically Heather's mic, that's why it's got the purple cable, so anytime we do streams and podcasts, you can just use that one right there. There's a little rail ridge thing that runs under the desk, so that's where I ran the mic cable all the way over so it can go into the Rodecaster. And speaking of the Rodecaster, it lives over on this desk, which is basically just a huge mess right now. So I've got the Rodecaster here for easy access. Under this little Monoprice monitor stand, that's where I've got the Focusrite Scarlet, and then I've also got the Cloud Lifter under there, and all the cables just run under there. On this little stand, I've got one of my speakers. These are Edifier speakers. They sound really good. I don't know if they're intended for like media editing, but they're great speakers. I originally got them for my record player, and now they just sort of do everything. So I have the other one on this side over here. I've got this little stand. This is where I'll charge my old MacBook. I sold my 16 inch for my 13 inch. 2013 MacBook Pro still going strong, so that usually is there. My main boom arm is mounted over here, so that way I can easily just move it in front of me when I'm recording or talking and everything is positioned nicely. I've been using the Shure Super 55 a lot lately and I did a video all about it. It's it's such a fun mic. I've got this little Akai sampler for sound effects. I've had this for years. It's kind of like the sound pads on the Rodecaster, but its own separate thing. It's pretty fun, but there's zero latency, so you can be really fast with your samples. Got some of my lights here, my control box here for the Falconize RX818, which is my backlight. I've still got my ATEM Mini, the base model version, and it's in the 3D printed stand that's designed by Aaron Parecki. My plan is to still use this and actually connect it to the extreme over here, and then I can have 11 inputs. Now that's truly extreme. And then I've got this little IntelliTech Pocket Cannon Mini over here. I love these lights. I have two of these. It's super bright. Sometimes I'll use it as an accent light or rim light, so it's just sort of here anytime I need it. And both this one and the Draycast light over here are just on onstage tabletop mic stands. And then I, actually here, I'll show you what I did. It's kind of neat. This is a 5 8 to quarter 20 adapter, so it goes from the regular mic stand to a quarter 20. And then this is a pin that just has a light stand connector and I screwed this into here and then used some Loctite to glue them together so they don't come apart. And now this mic stand can be a light stand. Under here is just an absolute mess. I have an old shelf thingy that just fits perfectly under this desk. It needs to get organized. It's got some 3D printing stuff, my Yamaha mixer, stuff for making videos, pens and pencils. It's it's sad and not amazing. This might not be totally desk related, but it's just kind of an update. I replaced some of my sound panels. So I ordered this big sound pad from a company called Acoustimac, where you can get any size you want and any color. This is a four foot by two foot sound panel. And then I also got one that I mounted above me over here to kind of help with some of that reverb that was happening in the room. So it's not perfect, but it works for me. And it's really fun to make all those little refinements that improve your workflow one little bit at a time. It can make a huge difference. If you want to know a little bit more about my setup, I do have my lighting tour setup video in addition to a studio tour video. So check those out and you can just hang out in here with me all day, basically.